We've got a fresh set available here at Mountain Crest Gardens. This is our newest set. It's called the Sweetheart Set of Nine, and it includes nine of these two inch succulents. And we just created this set because this time of year we have a lot of lovely pink pastel succulents coming in. So that's what this grouping is really all about. There are a lot of cute little pink and purpley tones in it. So I figured I would do a sample planting just so you can see um, what might be included. Obviously the varieties can change week to week, but this is a pretty good approximation of what it might look like. And so I've got some supplies prepared. This is our big um, seven and a half inch diameter rustic corrugated pot. So I'm gonna plant in that. I've got some succulent soil here. I have our small river rock top dressing, and these are all gonna fit in nicely with extra space to grow. And this pot doesn't have a drainage hole in it, which I'm comfortable with. I grow a lot of succulents. I'm used to how to water them and how to deal with a non-draining pot. Um, if you have the option, obviously pick a pot with a drainage hole in the bottom or put a hole in your pot. Um, but if not, you're gonna wanna use a nice well-draining soil and do not put rocks in on the bottom of this. That's not actually adding drainage. It's not helping the water situation in there. The soil that I'm filling this up with is um, the coconut coir that we usually grow our succulents in, but I've added extra perlite to it. So that's a light form of grit that's gonna help um, help water evaporate out of this pot so it can dry out faster and my succulents are less likely to suffer from root rot, which is important when you're growing succulents indoors where there's not as much airflow, often not as much sunlight, um, and you really want to do everything you can to help them dry out quickly. That probably looks a bit full. Um, what I've noticed is uh, when you plant things a little higher, they tend to look a little better and a little more full. Uh, if you get too low in the pot, they have a sort of depleted look to them. So with each of these pots, I'm just kind of gently squeezing them and turn them upside down, keep squeezing. And you've got a nice little root clump there. You could plant this as is if you want to like gently knock off a little dirt. That can be helpful too. And I think I'm gonna use this uh, rosette here. This is a Sedevaria Blue Elf, and it's a little bit taller. So that guy's gonna go in the middle so I can get a bit, tiny bit of height to a mound here. And if you see dried leaves at the bottom, you can pull those off. You're not gonna be harming the plant. It's already ready to shed those dry leaves. This is a classic, Echeveria Lola. Here, dun, dun. So I'm planting them really quite snugly um, and succulents are completely happy with that. They're used to growing in crevices between rocks and things. So really pretty root bound, frankly. Um, and I also really like the look that it gives them. I think that's gonna help create that bountiful look that we're going for. Too big of gaps around them and they start to look a little sparse. Oh, this is a fun one. So all of these in here are soft, tender succulents, but this one is a frost hardy variety. This is our Semper Vivum Trist with its gorgeous burgundy tips. And then this one's also a classic Echeveria Pearl von Nuremberg. It's got this super distinctive leaf shape to it and the edges have this like glow to them. They're a little bit lighter in color. Looks like I'm gonna need a touch more soil. This is the scoop from that succulent toolkit that we sell. You can find all of that, the tools, the top dressing, all at mountaincrestgardens.com. And then I'm gonna finish with this one, the Athona Ruby Necklace. Right now it's in its green colors, but the more sun it gets, the more that these little pickly things can turn purple. Oh, that's got some serious roots on it too. It is ready to grow. So this is gonna fill the crucial role of the spiller in the arrangement. You may be familiar with the um, idea of thriller, filler, and spiller when you're creating an arrangement. That's having a thriller, something tall, a filler to fill in the pot, and then a spiller to dangle out. So that's creating levels. It's a little bit interest. There's different leaf shapes to look at here. Okay. Bonsai Jack sends these, uh, 
planting two, uh, chopsticks with his soil and they're actually really, really helpful to plant with. So I'm just pressing the soil down now. Any spots that I got soil on the leaves, I can knock it off. Okay. Pull another dead leaf off. So I want that pretty snug in there. And great. Now I think I'm gonna do a little bit of top dressing. Um, so this is tricky to get in without getting in, in the middle of the rosettes. I think the scoop might be handy for this one. We'll see. It might be a, a delicate job here. Let's see. Yeah. The other top dressing I find I use a lot is the tan deco pebbles. Um, Cause like these mini river rocks, it's a pretty neutral color. So it works with all of the colors that I've got going in this arrangement, especially because a lot of succulents change colors throughout the year. So that's why it's nice to have neutral pots and neutral top dressings so that the colors are gonna kind of complement no matter what your succulent color is doing. <laughs> so in addition to making it look really polished, a top dressing also is creating a barrier between the leaves of your succulent and the soil. Um, so after I water this, the soil is gonna be a little bit damp and you don't really want succulent leaves resting on damp soil. It creates all these little humid pockets and succulents don't love humidity or moisture. You know, it's, uh, it's just helpful to keep them dry. <laughs> Couple more holes to fill in there. Wow. So I'm just using this toothpick to knock off any um, little bits of top dressing rocks that managed to get on top of the leaves. It's an imperfect process, but I actually really enjoy the like fiddling with it part. And as it grows, continuing to pull off those dry leaves at the base of rosettes, it's pretty satisfying. Fun. Okay. So, yeah. Having a little something to blow air on it can be good for the little bits of soil that, uh, that you can't brush off or knock off. But also any bits of soil are going to come off once I do water this. All right. So that is looking pretty snug in there. And unlike a lot of other plants, I'm not actually going to water this into its pot. So succulents love things dry. And whenever you're transplanting them, you're taking them out of one pot, putting them in another, you're inevitably going to break a couple roots. There'll be little micro tears. And all of those little micro tears really need to dry and callus and heal over um, before they can take in or before you water them. 
Otherwise they can let in bacteria and you're dealing with rot. Um, so I'm gonna leave this to dry at least a couple days um, and I'm not gonna water until the leaves show me that they're ready to water. So they're gonna feel less turgid, less firm. I might even see a little bit of wrinkles forming on them. Um, and then because this is a non-draining pot, I'm only gonna give it a little bit of water. So up to a third the volume of this pot, but it's a pretty big pot. So um, I can definitely go a lot on the water. When in doubt, don't water yet, wait, water less. That's always easier to fix than if you give it too much water. Um, yeah, and I'm gonna keep this in a very sunny windowsill. So south facing if you're in the Northern hemisphere, because these are, a lot of these are Echeveria type succulents and they're native to cliff sides. They're used to a lot of full sun. So to get them to look this compact and colorful indoors, you really need a lot of sun exposure. Um, but that is good to go. That makes a perfect gift for your sweetheart, your lover, your honey bun, whoever it may be, or for yourself. I think it's also a great gift to give oneself. So thanks so much for watching and you can find all the components of this and the sweetheart set of nine over at mountaincrestgardens.com.